انك لا تهدي من احببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء Assalamu alaikum to lies John Fontaine just before we begin the podcast please make sure you click subscribe and also set your notifications please support on the Patreon account Jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi welcome to the Young Smirks podcast we're here with another episode of the podcast and we're here with Sheikh Dimashqi again assalamu alaikum sheikh Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh MashaAllah sheikh it's great to have you back Me too, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, I wanted to do a series. I mentioned at the last, on the last episode we did that I was interested in doing a series about the prophets and the stories of the prophets and some of the lessons that we can learn uh, from the stories of the prophets. You know, Sheikh, why is it important for us? Why has Allah chosen these particular stories and what is the significance of these stories that Allah mentions in the Quran Alhamdulillah this I flashed in my mind the moment you were asking this question those are the ones that Allah guided so by their guidance take their guidance as a model for you He's ordering the Prophet ﷺ to take their way of guidance as a model for him. Mm. That's number one. Isn't it significant enough that Allah... Imagine if Islam is something different than what Mo- Moses came with, what Isa came with. Why Allah is telling him in the Quran, those are the people whom I have guided. So take their guidance as a model for you. How come they say that Muhammad's message is different than Moses' message? Or That's a lie. That's number one. The other thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, after relating to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu use of story and how Yusuf was patient, perseverant, He said at the end of this, And in every messenger, we relate to you their stories by which we strengthen your heart. So by the stories of Musa, the stories of Isa, There is a strengthening of the heart to the Prophet Muhammad So, bringing up these stories, it helps people's heart being strengthened in Iman. There's a need for this. Also, we take their guidance as a model for us. Since Allah said that to his Prophet Muhammad that shows that there is no difference between what Moses came with And what Muhammad came with because their message is one. And Allah is relating between the stories of all the prophets in the Quran with the message of the Prophet Muhammad. So let's pick one now today. Yeah. So 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 that generally the, the stories of the prophets they strengthen our heart as well? Sure. Yeah. That's what Allah said. So what prophets should we focus on today? Musa, hmm. whom Allah said to him, and I bestowed, I poured down from up love to you, O Musa, from among myself. I poured down love to you. And you will be raising up. Under my observation and my care, under my eye. Does it seem that, uh, you know, if the Muhammad is a liar, he won't be. Say, he will be saying, "Forget about all those before. Follow my, follow me only." Why, why we find in the Quran that Allah said to Musa, "I bestowed from up, down to you, love from myself to you, O Musa." Okay. 
Surah Al-Qasas is very beautiful. And at the beginning of Surah Al-Qasas, Allah starts with the story of Musa and Fir'aun. And he said, <coughs> We relate to you, that means Muhammad, the story of Musa and Fir'aun by truth for people who know, uh, for people who believe. Inna Fir'aun ala fil ard. Fir'aun went um, uh, out, he was out in the land, behaving out. How do you mean? Sorry. That he is higher than people, mm. highly. And he caused his people to be divided. Shia. Shia is the plural of Shia. And Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his qadr, he destined for the Shia to love the title Shia. To love that title, to be given as a name for them. Mm. And Allah said that Shia means divided people. So mashallah, they got the, the good title for us, which is bad for them, but it's good for us to take note from them. Wait, anyway. So, <laughs> so he divided the people. Why? And this, how can he be uh, reigning over them? If you want to supersede people, divide them. So, this is what he was doing. He weakens a part of them. He keeps slaughtering their children. And he enslaved their women. This is what he used to be doing to the people of Israel. He was one of those corrupt. And we want to bestow our favor upon those who have been weakened in the land. To, to, to give them power. To, re to return power to them. Those who have been weakened in the land. And we make them leaders. And we make them ears in the land. And we, we give them control on earth. And to show Fir'aun and Haman and their people from the people of Israel what they used to be uh, avert, uh, avoiding. He was afraid of something from them. That's why he was killing their children. Okay. So, now, here's the greatness of Allah. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِي And we inspired to the mother of Musa that you keep giving him your milk. Feed him. فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ If you have fear about him, فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَامِ if you have fear about him, throw him in the river. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of mother that when she has fear on her child, she throw him, she cast him in the river? That's a divine command. And Allah who created mercy in the mother, he will inspire to the, to the mother to throw the baby, even despite the mercy she has about him. Mm. This is a divine command. وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي you should neither fear nor grieve. You should not, he's saying to the mother of Musa, you should not fear, you should not grieve. Inna raddu. Why, why, why? Oh God, why? The answer is here. Inna raddu hu ilayki. We are going to return him to you. Not only this, وَجَعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And we're going to make him a messenger. Allahu Akbar. Now, part two of Allah's greatness. Or, or stage two, sorry, stage two. So just, just, just on that point about Allah making him a messenger. So that was actually told to the mother of Musa. No. Mm. Sure. When, the, when Musa was still taking yes. the milk, Allah told his mother this. Mm. Okay. Then the next ayah. 
فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ Then the people of Fir'aun picked him up. Why? Oh Allah, why? Look at the answer from Allah. So he will be for them an enemy and grievous. Huh? But they did not know. Yes. So who decided that they pick him up to become an enemy and grievous for them? It's Allah's decision. When Fir'aun was busy slaying the children because he fears that something may, that one of the people of Israel may be the one who will be the cause of Fir'aun's parish. So he killed everybody until his wife, when, this, when Musa was seen by, by the guards, the mother, uh, uh, sorry, the wife of Pharaoh said, Pick that basket. Bring it. There's something in it. Mm. So Allah drove her attention to it. Then as they brought the baby to her, the divine command was, Love him. Oh, wife of, of Pharaoh, love him. Just so she loved him. She got him. And mm. Pharaoh knew about it. <coughs> he wanted to kill him. Obviously, said, obviously, they knew this was from yeah. the Bani Israel. Look, look in the Quran. La Please don't kill him. That's the wife of Pharaoh. Asa ayyam fa'ana. He may be beneficial to us. Oh, poor Pharaoh. What a weak Pharaoh. You hope to raise up a baby so he may be beneficial to you. Look what Pharaoh has. <laughs> and he has, he's expecting a benefit for him. It seems he was impotent. Hmm. No children. Hmm. So take him. He'll be beneficial. What does it mean? He'll be beneficial to us. Oh, we take him as a son for us. Hmm. Then Allah's comment was right after that. Why they do not perceive it. They don't perceive. They don't know what Allah is preparing for them. They are under the law and the command of Allah. إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا كَانُوا خَاطِئِينَ And for Fir'aun and Haman and his soldiers were wrongdoers. Then, so they picked him up. Then the mother of Musa, وَقَالَتْ لِأُخْتِهِ قُصِّيهِ Then she said to his sister, trace him, follow him. Where they will go with him. So she was observing him from far, from distant. Why they don't perceive it. And before that, we made all the breasts of milk, of women, forbidden on Musa. Hmm. Now it became concern. With, with Fir'aun. This baby, uh, this uh, milk, is rejected by Musa. The other milk. Everybody, Musa is rejecting everything. And he's hungry and thirsty. And that increased the concerns of the wife of Fir'aun. Please do something. Then the sister of Musa interfered immediately. She said, Shall I guide you to a family who will be taking good care of him? Uh, uh, Allah said, So we returned him to his mother as he promised her. So her eye will be cool. And she, and she did not have any kind of grievance after that. Uh, and so that she knows that the promise of Allah is true. Look, isn't it a good lesson to take that when Musa was about to drown in, in the river, Allah let the saving of Musa be by the hands of Pharaoh. Mm, Why Pharaoh? Because yeah. this is the yeah. command of Allah and it had been fulfilled. That one of the people of Israel will be the cause of Pharaoh's perish. Mm. And that's what happened. He was saved while he was a baby, 
while Fir'aun was not saved while he was tyrant. Mm. And when people, that shows also how strong was the Iman of Musa. When the two groups, Fir'aun and his people, Musa and his people, they were looking at one another and they got so close. What did the people of Musa say? They said, we are perished, we are done. Finish, we are done. Look, he's so close to us. What was the reply of Musa? Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. No, I have my Lord. He will guide me. Then he was ordered to hit with his staff. So that was the first time that this lowest level, deepest level of the sea can meet with the with the, with the uh, brightness of the sun. That was the first time. So the sea was split and, and Pharaoh started to say, Amantu billadhi amanat bihi banu Israel wa ana min al-Muslimin. I believed in the one whom the people of Israel believed in and I am one of the Muslims. Look at the reply of Allah. Now? And you kept disobeying before? And you were one of the corruptors? So this day we're going to be saving you by your corp. So you'll be a lesson for those who will be coming after you. Didn't this happen? Where's the body of Pharaoh? That's another case now. Okay. It's, so that shows the great morals of Musa. He did not weaken when the two groups were about to get one another, to reach to one another. Mm. And Allah performed that, performed that great miracle. So it's, it's something really great. Yeah. So when he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى We granted our favor upon you again. إِذْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ مَا يُوحَى We revealed to your mother what had been revealed. أَنِ اقْذِفِيهِ فِي التَّابُوتِ So cast him in the box, cast him in the river. فَلْيُلْقِهِ الْيَمُّ بِالسَّاحِلِ So let the sea throw him to the beach. يَأْخُذْهُ عَدُوٌ لِي وَعَدُوٌ لَهُ He'll be taken by one who'll be an enemy to me, an enemy to him. As Ibn al-Qayyim said, the divine command was like this. O oh, Pharaoh, take him. Take good care of him. Raise him up in your palace. We will not let anyone in your parish to be taken place by anyone except by him. Take care of him in your house. So a moment will come. He will be the cause of your parish. So the command of Allah must take place. That shows Allah's greatness. And the weakness of a human Completely being. humiliated. When you read these Completely verses in the Quran, and imagine what people say about the Prophet Muhammad. No, he's a liar. He's, he's a camel rider. He's etc. etc. Why they have to speak against the camel? I don't. I don't. This is an expression of arrogance. Hmm. You know. The significant the thing here is that. Pharaoh and his people said, Should we be believing in two, two human beings, the like of us, and their own people are servants to us? We should believe in Musa and his brother, while his own tribe, his own people are servants for us. Mm. He was highly behaving. Uh, the same, the same. That's what I was, I was saying, yeah. Oti in the land. Yeah. He was... Be behaving yeah. out that outly that means highly mm. so th this is what's happening now people say why do we have to believe in the Arabian religion today yeah. Yeah. while their people are subdued to us exactly the same trace exactly yeah. it's our last test that's what's happening look Muslims are weak but those disbelievers they see that Islam is strong Despite mm. they view that the Muslims are weak, yes. Mm.
But, but how can we combine between the two things? Islam is rapidly coming to us. While the Muslims are weak, they're under control, our control. Yeah. It's, a miracle. it's Allah's yeah. best. And the it's, Bani Israel did that in Medina as well. not only the devil who said, I am better than him. You can see those people today, they say we're better than him. Yeah. In, in a matter of fact, the Jews now, they spread this idea that we're the chosen people of God. God chose us. Yeah. God chose us. The good thing now, when Musa had to leave because he killed a man from, a, from the tribe of Pharaoh, he killed him, and Allah gave uh, Musa a strong hand, very strong hand. So he went out <coughs> from, from uh, Egypt, <coughs> and he went to Median. As he entered, he saw two women taking a corner waiting for the crowd to finish mm. filling water. Mm. So he said to them, what is the matter with you standing like this? They said, we're waiting for the crowd to fill their water, then we go after them. MashaAllah, so there's no mixture between males and females there. That's a good point. Mm. They're taking a corner, waiting for the crowd. Fasaqalahuma. Then he sought water for them, and he gave them the water. What did he do after that? That's a good lesson. He filled water for them. So they took the water and they went. Then he took a corner under the shade of the tree. And he supplicated, Oh Allah, إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ As for the good you uh, provided me. I'm still poor. You know what it means? Oh Allah, when he saw the two girls, he's asking Allah, in a matter of fact, to provide him a wife. So today this is a supplication for the one who seek wife, to have a wife. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. The next ayah, what do you expect the next ayah? فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءِ so one of the two girls, she came walking with a great kind of shyness. Walking timidly. Not only walking, timidly. With shyness. What did she say to him? My father is inviting you to reward you for what you uh, collected water for us. So he went. So Musa, uh, when he told him about what happened between him and Musa and uh, Pharaoh, he said, "No worries, Allah saved you uh, uh, from wrongdoer people. Don't worry, Allah saved you." Hmm. Then one of the two girls interfered. Qalat ihdahuma ya abat istajir. One of the two said, "Oh Allah, ah, stop, stop, Allah." Oh, my father, hire him. The best among those whom you hire is the strong, the trustworthy. These two attributes are important. If you want to hire someone, you have to maintain those two attributes to be in him. Strong and trustworthy. Strong without trustworthiness, not good to be against you. Being trustworthy but weak, that will not help also. You'll be in trouble. That's why the Prophet said to Abu Dhar when, he, when Abu Dhar said to him, Oh Prophet, let me be leader over any village. He said, Oh Abu Dhar, Wallahi, I love you. Uh, and you are weak. And it's a matter of trustworthiness, which will be at the day of judgment a, ma a matter of sorrow and regret. I don't like it for you, you're weak. Abu Dhar was a great companion, a great believer, but the Prophet realized a sort of weakness in him, so it doesn't suit him to be a leader. Mm. You know? Mm. So she said, the, the girl is saying, is the best one among those whom you hire is the strong and trustworthy. Mm. So, what did the father say after that? After she said about hiring him, he said, I want to grant you 
one of those two girls of mine, my two daughters, one of them, that you work with me for eight years. If you want to increase, increase it to be 10, it's from an optional, and it, you have two years optional. So when she said hire him, the father recognized, he yeah. understood what she meant. He said to him, I want to grant you one of my daughters to be your wife. So when he said, oh Allah, I'm poor regarding what you granted me and provided me, I'm poor, still poor. Mm. Immediately, the next ayah, she came timidly walking mm. and she invited him. And the marriage took place. And, the, and, and it was immediate as well. It's immediate. You know, marriage was easy, made easy for, he made it easy for his daughters. And so we should take lesson from this. Yeah. You may need to have a wife, but you sin at the same time. It, will be, it may be the cause of delaying your um, achievement and provision of marriage. Marriage is provision. Yeah. It's just like being provided to buy food. Likewise, it's a matter of marriage. It's a provision. So this provision may be delayed for you as a lesson to take so you won't be disobeying Allah. Mm. Because look at the Prophet. The moment he supplicated for marriage, the marriage came to him. So there are many, many lessons to be taken through the story of Musa. But at the same time, it shows Allah's greatness. When Pharaoh decided, Allah decided of, Allah's decision was over his decision. Mm. Sheikh, you know, you know the um, father of the girls, was this Prophet Shu'aib? Not necessary, no. No. Hmm. But do, is it possible it might be him or is it...? It had not been proven. Hmm. I don't want to say possible. That means I'm, I'm giving a possible information. Yeah. I don't want to be put in that. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that because I know... If people. the name is the same, it doesn't mean that this is the same person. Mm. Like, for example, when the Muslims met with the people of uh, the Christians in the south of Saudi Arabia today, Najran. Yeah. The people of Najran brought that doubt. See, bringing these doubts is not something new. It used to be a long time ago. So th those people of Christians of Najran, they said to the Muslims, how your Quran says, Ya Ukhta Harun, hmm. or, or sister of Aaron. Hmm. And Aaron was before. How can she be the sister of Aaron? Hmm. So the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ seeking an answer for this. The Prophet said, those people used to be naming their children with the names of prophets. Hmm. So they call her with the name of her brother. Not her grand grand grandfather Harun, who is the brother of Musa. Mm. Likewise, as the matter of Shuaib, mm. doesn't mean necessarily that that he is that yeah. prophet. No. Okay. Yes, yeah, Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. So, as we said, these stories in the Quran were set by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mm. to cause a strengthen, a strengthening in the heart of the Prophet, which which we need it more than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm. To strengthen our hearts with Iman thereby. Mm. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. SubhanAllah Jazakallah Khair Shaykh. You know, uh, amazing uh, insight, you know, when you just reflect. I mean, we'd, we've heard these stories many times, but just reading through them quickly without reflecting, without, you know, trying to derive the lessons, you know, the, the idea is we're supposed to benefit from them, you know, and understanding. Having understanding of these verses, you but know, gives us that strength in the heart, as you sure, were saying. Sure, sure. Mm. Not only the stories with Pharaoh mm. were very good and good lesson to be taken from. Even the next stages after that, mm. when, when the rudeness of the people of Israel started to emerge, mm. when he urged them to be patient yeah. against Pharaoh and his rudeness, they said, we have been harmed before you came to us and right after you came to us. Now we are being harmed before you and because of you. Poof! How did he, how did he react to this? Maybe Allah will be perishing 
uh, your enemy. <clears throat> and after that, we know when they said, make gods for us as those people have gods. Mm -hmm. At the end, at the end, after suffering with his people, he said to them, يا قوم ادخلوا الأرض المقدسة التي كتب كتب الله لكم ولا ترتدوا على أعقابكم فتنقلبوا خاسرين. He said, Oh my people, enter the holy land which Allah had determined for you, and do not and do not back off faith. So you'll be among those. You know, they said to him. قالوا يا موسى إن لن ندخلها حتى يخرجوا منها آه لا ليس قالوا يا موسى إن فيها قوما جبارين the holy land contains is consisted by hard people like Palestinians وإن لن ندخلها حتى يخرجوا منها we're not going to enter it until they get out of it فإن يخرجوا منها if they went out of it, we will be entering it. Then, yeah, There are two people among the people of Israel, they said, who they fear Allah. And Allah granted favor upon them too. Uh, they said, enter, enter it. They enter through the gate, jump into the gate. If you did it, then they will go. Then what was the reaction of the people of the Jews after that? Oh Musa, we're not going to enter it. Never. Until, uh, uh, as long as they are in it. فذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا، then go you and your lord and fight. إن ها هنا قاعد. We are waiting for you. We are here waiting for you. Go you and God and fight. We are waiting for you. Then he said that was the final with with موسى. Then he said. قال رب إني لا أملك إلا نفسي وأخي. He said, Oh my lord, I owe nothing. But myself and my brother. فافرق بيننا وبين القوم الفاسقين. So separate between us, the two, and the people of Fisk. قال فإنها محرمة عليهم أربعين سنة. And Allah said, it is forbidden on them to enter it for 40 years. يتيهون في الأرض. They will be wasted in the land. فلا تأسى على القوم الفاسقين. so don't be regretful against those for those people. don't sympathize yourself for them for the wrongdoing people. one other thing which is I hope it's the last if we have time. they said to Musa after after the separation of the sea and they saw the miracles. they kept with him for a period of time. they said. قلت يا وإذ قلت يا موسى لن نصبر على طعام واحد and remember, O oh people of the Jews, when you said to Musa, we won't be patient for eating one type of food. Then ask your Lord to produce for us. Let the earth be uh, bringing out something of the adas, fuliha, wa adasiha, wa basaliha, thumiha, wa adasiha. Let Allah bring out from the land something like garlic, onion, Adas, it's a brown uh, uh, thingy. Then Musa said, أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرٌ Are you substituting, exchanging what is less for what is better? What is better is to be patient. What is less is to get those fruits you're asking about. Yeah. Then what he said to them, قال تستبدلون الذي هو أدنى بالذي هو خير اهبطوا مصرا get go back to Egypt if you like these kinds of food get back to Egypt فإن لكم ما سألتم you will be getting there what you ask for 
But finally, you'll be humiliated just like before. That's what he meant. But this is checkmate to them. You want garlic, onion, etc., etc., then get back to Egypt. You'll find that there. As if he's saying, you used to be having this kind of food there, but you used to be humiliated, and you used to be killed there. Get back to Egypt if you like. And you know, the story of the, of the cow when they killed someone. Yes. Oof, a lot of things. How? That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when someone harmed him with a word, he said, may Allah's mercy be upon my brother Musa. He was harmed by something more than that. He was harmed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that uh, those people of Israel, they used to be weakened by Pharaoh. And he ordered Musa to save them. Although he knows what's going to happen, even what's going to happen today, that they're going to be worse than Pharaoh. They're putting now Pharaoh in their small pocket. Now if Pharaoh was here, he would be taking lessons from them about how to rule and control the whole, the whole earth as they're doing what they're doing today. The corrupt they're causing in the land is worse than what Pharaoh used to be corrupting in the land at that time. You can see that. Yeah. And Allah mentioned that in Surah Al-Isra, at the beginning of Surah Al-Isra. Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will, be, you will be becoming extremely controllers and having a lot of followers. He said, وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا People pe uh, you, uh, uh, will let you be the most supported people. And now this is what's happening. Look as an English person. You can insult the Queen of England, but you cannot insult a Jew because you'll, this will be a great attack. Mm. And, and, and it's forbidden. It's not forbidden to insult even the Queen of England, but it's forbidden to insult the people of the Jews because you'll be considered anti-Semitic. And you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's their time now. Look, the, those uh, caricatures who drew the cartoon against the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. They've been challenged since that time until today. Why did you do that? They say, this is an expression of freedom. Okay, did you exert that expression of, fear of freedom against the Prophet Musa? We challenge you to do that. You want. Hmm. Why? Because we know, everybody know that even those leaders of the West are puppets, mason puppets for the Jews. Hmm. So this is the time of the Jews now. Yeah. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring his command and things will be changing. Now this weakness that people suffer is a test. Mm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be showing those in the, in the time of the Muslim weakness, the hypocrites cannot hide themselves anymore. Mm. They'll be showing their internal kufr. Mm. So in some, Allah knows what he's, the, he's doing. This period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be filtering. You know the filtration? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there will be a clear iman and clear kufr. Mm. There's, no, there's nothing in between like hypocrisy, mm. hiding kufr. So a stage after that, the Muslims will be strong, inshallah enough. So Sheikh, you know, after the Bani Israel, they'd gone, you know, f seen the sea part, mm -hmm. they started worshipping the cow. You know, they're complaining about what's going on, even though Musa, you know, with the permission of Allah, saved them from slavery. And then you come to the point of where Musa receives the revelation from <coughs> Allah. You know, this is when they're wandering mm. in the wilderness. Mm -mm. So maybe we can give some yeah. lessons from this as well. Yeah, subhanAllah. After they've been seeing these merit, this great miracle in the sea, when they went, when they reached to the land, they saw people dedicating, devo devoting themselves on statues. So the moment they see them, they saw them, they said to Musa, Oh Musa, make gods for us as they, th those people have gods for them. Mm. Then Musa said, Innakum qawmun tajhalu. Oh people, you are going to ignorance. Inna ha'ulai mutabbarun ma hum fihi wa batilun ma kanu ya'malun. Those people are going to falsehood. قَالَ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَبْغِيكُمْ إِلَاهًا وَهُوَ فَضَّلَكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Do I 
uh, prefer for you, uh, sorry, uh, do I, uh, do I seek for you someone but to worship Allah alone, to take Allah alone as God, mm -hmm. while he preferred you over all nations? Now we have to stop here for a while to ask ourselves, did Allah prefer the people of the Jews? We say yes. So they have the right to say that we have preference over all, all nations. And the Quran says that. And, and Allah refers to Musa saying to the people of Israel, and Allah preferred you over all nations. We say yes. The preference here is by the da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted them to convey and publish. They are preferred by this. But when they did not take that, that mission, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred other nations to take it. And, this, and that's our nation. Mm -hmm. So our nation now are preferred mm -hmm. over them because of the mission. Allah does not prefer people merely because of their skin. Mm -hmm. No, no. Or by race. No. Prefer them with the mission because most of the prophets were given that mission in the midst of the people of Israel. Mm. Okay? So that's what it means. Mm. <clears throat> then they have taken the calf. Why? There was an appointment between Musa and Allah. And that is so beautiful. <clears throat> um, the appointment took 30 days and Allah increased it 10 more days. So the meeting with Allah, between Musa and Allah, was 40 days. But Musa came before the appointment. So Allah asked him, What caused you to rush to me away from your people? He, he said, Oh Allah, those people are after me. And I rushed myself to you, so you'll be pleased with me. I rushed myself. See, when I remember this ayah, if I feel laziness, from going to the masjid, I remind myself with this ayah. Mm. I rushed myself to you, O Allah, so you'll be pleased with me. Allahu Akbar. That shows the iman of those prophets, the greatness of those prophets. <laughs> then Allah said, We فَإِنَّ We tried your people after you. وَأَضَلَّهُمُ السَّامِرِي The Samaritan person he misguided them. He misled them. What did he do? He ordered them to collect the gold. He dissolved the, 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 the gold. How to say that? By fire, you know? Yes, that's it, yeah. yeah. And he made a shape of a calf out of that, through that gold, by that gold. And he made some holes in the nose of the... So when the wind passes by, it causes a whistling kind of tone. Yeah. So he said, this is your God and the God of Musa. And they started to... And they said, لَن نَبْرَحَ عَلَيْهِ عَاكِفِينَ حَتَّى يَرْجِعَ إِلَيْنَا مُوسَى We will keep devoting ourselves with this calf until Musa returns. N not only this, they used to say to Musa, we're not going to believe in you until we see Allah clearly now. We want to see him, otherwise we won't believe. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately while they're saying this, poof, he threw them with his lightning and they died. Then Allah granted them life again. Many, they saw many miracles, yeah. but their, heart, their hearts became hardened. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so Musa had really hard time with those people. And they did not get the message. Mm. And this Ummah is preferred with this message. What is the evidence? Kuntum khayra ummatin nas. You were the best nation that brought out to people. The ayah did not stop here then, though. No. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. anil munkar. So you were the best nation because of this, you order what is good, and you forbid what is wrong. And uh, you believe in Allah, subhanAllah. And, and some and of they those... didn't believe in Allah. Yeah, and, and uh, some of the people of Israel as well, they had problem. 
Allah test. Allah did not test only Pharaoh, but he tested those whom he saved from Pharaoh. They are also tested. One of the tests of those people, they used to be living in uh, neighboring the sea. And uh, the sea, the, uh, they're forbidden from hunting and fishing on Saturday. Because they say that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he took rest. That means Sabbath. So it was said to them, oh, you say that God took rest on the Sabbath? Take rest. You take rest on the Sabbath. And they got, they have been tested. Mm. During the whole week, whales, fish, they appear to them and say, hello. On Saturday, they disappear. Oh, uh, no, 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 fish. no, the opposite. Uh, let me recite the ayah. It's, yeah. it's good. It's important. If ta'tihim hitanuhum yawma sabtihim shurra. Yeah, I was wrong. There, the, 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 the whales and the fish, they appear clearly to them on Saturday. وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ لَا تَأْتِيهِمْ And when it's not Saturday, all the whales and the fish disappear. كَذَلِكَ نَبْلُوهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسِقُونَ Thus, we test them because of their fisk. Fisk, it means a fasiq, uh, abomination. Because of their abomination. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ A group of them said, لِمَ تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا إِلَّهُ مُهْلِكُهُمْ Why do you have to admonish people and advise people whom Allah, in any case, is going to punish them? Then the other part replied and said, قَالُوا مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So we can apologize to Allah that we advise at least. Hmm. And that also the other reason of advising them that they may fear Allah. Yeah. <clears throat> and when they denied and forgot deliberately what they were reminded with, and Jaina Ladina in Hauna Anisu, we saved those who used to be forbidding the evil. And Jaina Ladina in Hauna Su. And then we caused those who used to be doing the evil a great kind of punishment. Now, who had been punished? Those who used to be. Oh, I forgot to tell you. That on the Sabbath, they had to make a trick, to trick Allah. Mm. They used to be preparing some holes and some decoys. The nets, yeah. Okay, sorry? The nets. Nets yeah. and yeah, other yeah. things. So they put them, they prepare them on Saturday. Next day they come while the holes and the nets are filled with whales and fish. So they come on Sunday and say, we did not work on Saturday. We're working on Sunday. So mm. as they manipulated the fact, mm. Allah manipulated their, their creation and he transformed them into apes and Swine. pigs, swines. Mm. When the Prophet attacked the Jews, when they uh, betrayed him and they broke their promises to him, he was calling them, O oh, brothers of the monkeys and the swines. He didn't say, O oh, sons. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. transform people as a punishment, mm. he does not male, make offspring for them. Finish. They'll be themselves transformed. SubhanAllah. It doesn't make offspring because, so it's wrong to say to the Jews today, you are sons of the apes, sons of the, sw of the swines. No, they're not. Islamically, we believe this. As the Prophet said, O oh, brothers of the apes. He did not say, O oh, sons of the apes. Yeah. Because the lineage stops, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So there are two types of groups in this story. Those who tricked. Those who said, it's a waste of time mm. to keep admonishing them. Don't bother yourself on that. Just leave them. And the third part are those who... And joined the good and forbade the, the evil. 
those two were taken in punishment. Mm. And Allah saved the third part who kept uh, mm. advising and forbidding the evil. Mm. And it's them ones that were, you know, the ones who you said uh, are the, with the righteous nation. Yes. You know, and it's, Allah, not, it's not the, the, the ones who are not righteous. You know, yeah, there are, and he favored the Bani Israel over other nations. Yes. It's these ones. Yes. The, the Muslim ones. Exactly. Ones. Exactly. And uh, what I wanted to say also, also that Allah, we find it many times repeated in the Quran. And we saved those who believed and they used to fear Allah. Hmm. So that's why forbidding the evil and enjoining people to do the good is the best mission on earth. Hmm. And the best, those who deserve to be saved when Allah's punishment comes are those who keep persistently enjoining the good forbidding the evil and the best people on earth are those uh, those who keep recommending one another for truth and for patience Sheikh, and this remains in this ummah where Sheikh, you, you speak about commanding the good forbidding the evil sometimes people get embarrassed or shy you know I noticed today when we was on the way to the masjid you stopped a couple of your youngsters at different times, you know, a couple of young brothers who were smoking. You know, yes. and we, we're on our way to the masjid and I'm thinking, what yes. are you doing, Sheikh? Like, you know, yes. you know, and, and you stopped and you advised. And yeah. uh, I just wanted to share with the people what you said to them because I found it quite, quite interesting because you, <laughs> you made him think. Yes, yes. You know, you yes. was advising him about smoking. He yes. just... Tell the I said I said to him, you know, I, I caught him like this and I said, Hey brother, why don't you smoke why do we smoke? Why don't you quit it? He said, Believe me, I couldn't. It's a trouble, but I couldn't. So I said, How happy the devil is when he hear you saying I could I can't stop it. Because he's sampling now your weakness. That gives him a great encouragement. Mm to persist against you. Mm. How happy he is to hear from you that you can't stop. That's number mm. one. Number two. So I said, do you want something to encourage you to stop it? He said, yes. I said, if you want to stop it, say Bismillah before you smoke it. Would you say Bismillah? He said, no. No, never say Bismillah. I said, all right. Then say Alhamdulillah for that favor he granted me. Would you say that? He said, no. I can't say Alhamdulillah. I said, so you know that it's haram. And I leave the rest with you. Then I left. <laughs> I leave the analysis and the comments yeah. in your conscience. Yeah, That's all. No, it's good, Alhamdulillah. I like to see uh, sheikhs like yourself who are active, you know, in, in the cause of Allah. You know, giving da'wah. Wallahi, sheikh, don't praise me. I swear by Allah, I have to interrupt you. Wallahi, I feel a great deal of shortness. And I keep, while you are saying this, I keep asking Allah to forgive me for my shortness. So, please. No, no. You have, we have also to differentiate between weakness and shyness. Mm. You know, you said that those people are shy. Are, Which people? Um, they, are, they, they feel shy from um, uh, enjoining the good. And forbidding the evil, they mm. feel shy. Yeah. That's not shyness. Because mm. shy shyness does not bring except what is good. The consequence of shyness is always good, as the Prophet said. This is not shyness. They call mm. it shyness while it's weakness. Amrad mm. ibn Hussain. That's in Sahih Muslim. He was relating the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, the Prophet said, shyness is good. Ah, there's a, there's a man who was in his assembly. He said, we've been reading in the books of hikmah, wisdom. 
That means philosophy. He said, we've been reading in the books of hikmah, wisdom, that a part of shyness is something glorious and great, but a part of it is weakness. Then the eyes of Amr bin Hussain became red, and he said to him, don't you see that I'm relating to you what the Prophet said, and you intercept and contradict what he said by those so-called books of wisdom? His name is Bushair ibn Ka'b. So he got angry. So the people who are in the assembly, they said, Oh, Amran ibn Hussain, this man is one of us. He's good. He's not bad. Then he kept silent for a while. Then he repeated what the Prophet said, that shyness is all good. Then the man interfered and said, but still, the, the books, we read the books. They say mm -hmm. that uh, uh, some of it is shyness is good and some of it is, is bad, is weakness. Then he got angry again and he repeated. He said, am I, am I, don't you see me relating to you what I heard from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi And then you say mm -hmm. part of it is good and part of it mm -hmm. is bad? What does this mean? Today, those who say we are Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, the Ash'aris, they build their beliefs by those books of philosophy which contradicts the Quran in many of Allah's attributes and they don't care about that and that, sh that shows that the Muslims should be proud and sticking to the sources of book and sunnah and this is fitna that someone said to them we've been reading in the books books of hikmah that part of shyness is good part of shyness is bad and now today you see people they hear the Prophet saying every innovation is misguidance and they say, oh, no, some, of innova some innovations are bad, some innovations are good. Mm -hmm. Those people, mm -hmm. they need to hear the hadith of Abraham bin Hussain. Mm -hmm. There's a great deal of lesson that we take from. Mm -hmm. So, Sheikh, coming to the end of <laughs> Musa's life, mm -hmm. what lessons can we get from that? You know, is the last part of the story of Musa is also... Mm -hmm can consist in itself great lesson. That Musa السلام, he was very shy by the way. Mm. Musa was very shy. And people used to be bathing while naked sometimes. While Musa he kept himself always away. So nothing of him is shown. And we know the story of that. Mm. The last thing of Musa السلام, that he entered his house and he found a human being in the house. But who is that human being? It was an angel. That Allah sent him to give him the option whether he wants to die or not. So when Musa saw him in his house, he hit him by his hand. And he damaged one of his eyes. We don't know when, how it happens mm. when the angels take a form of a human being and they get damaged because of this. But this, the narration is in Sahih Muslim. And, uh, and uh, it's been said to Musa, Ajib Rabbak, respond to the call of your Lord. Your Lord wants you to die. So he hit the angel. So the angel got back to Allah and he said, he sent me to one who hit my eye and damaged it. Then Allah returned his eye back. Sound. And he ordered him to get back to Musa and say to him, Do you want, is it the life that you want? If you want life, put your hand on the feather of a bull. The fur. Catch it, huh? The fur. Yeah, the fur. And catch it with your hand and see by every piece of fur that stick to your hand, you'll be given one year to live. Then Musa said, what after that, O oh Allah? Then Allah said, then death. 
Then Musa said, then from now. That means now I want to die. I'm ready. And that also reminds us that prophets, to show also that all the people, that those were true people of Allah, true men of Allah, mm. the prophets are giving the option whether to die or not. Mm. Not to all, anyone else but the prophets and the messengers. When they die, yeah. Yes. Mm. Like what happened with the Prophet Muhammad mm. um, Sallallahu When he said, there is a man whom Allah had given an option whether to live or to die. Uh, sorry, whether to enjoy the worldly life or to achieve what Allah has for him. So he chose what Allah has for him. Then Abu Bakr was seen crying. Then he interfered and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, Wallahi, we ransom you. By our children, by our souls, by our property, we ransom you. Then people said, Why Abu Bakr is crying? The Prophet is talking about one person who had been, in, been given the option whether to die or to achieve what Allah has for him. They did not understand what Abu Bakr understood. Abu Bakr understood that the Prophet is indicating his closeness of death. Mm. That's why Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, after that he commented on this hadith and he said, Abu Bakr was the most learned person among us, man of understanding. One of the significant stories that has great lessons and it deserves to be given one whole lecture about Musa when he met Al-Khadr. Mm. Musa was asked, do you know anyone who has more knowledge than you? Musa said no. Mm. Musa was truthfully saying no. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a, a self-blame to him that yes, I have a servant of mine who has knowledge that you don't have. Mm. Then Musa immediately said, where's the way to him? Now he wants to run to him because he has extra knowledge. Mm. SubhanAllah, Shaykh. Great lessons, great insight into the story of Musa and some of the lessons. And I know you've not really even touched the surface, really, on the stories of Musa. And there's a lot more as well. You know, you've got the, the, uh, the meeting with Khidr. You know, one of the, you know, the, the interaction sure. that he had also when Musa, uh, you know, was when, when the Prophet actually uh, interacted with Musa on the night journey as well. Yeah. Um, and so maybe next time we can speak about that, inshallah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't want to rush that. And we've already covered a lot today. So inshallah, yeah. in, in other, another episode, we can go through more so details. So as a result, we say, hmm. Allah granted Musa great favor. Hmm. The power of his body hmm. and the power of his iman and through these two elements we can get grab a lot of benefits from that alhamdulillah i think a part of that had been done tonight yeah. and there will be more benefits to be taken and lessons from his meeting hmm. with al-khadr and from his meeting with the prophet but the last thing to say don't forget that allah granted musa with a miracle that no one had before or even after. And that is that he heard the speech of Allah. Mm. He heard the sound of Allah. And that is something significant for Musa only. Mm. Subhanallah. We'll so, give more comment on that, inshallah, inshallah. next time. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Barakallah fiqh. Jazakallah khair. Thanks for everyone for listening. I hope you got some benefit from that. Subhanallah, going back to the stories. As, as you know, a lot of these stories we've heard before, but have we really reflected on some of the lessons that they've given and how can we learn from these lessons and implement them in our life and actually get the benefit of them actually strengthening our heart. So join us next time for another episode of The Young Smirks. That's all for today. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء